Well, now. We're back. I'm still exhausted. Water cleanup continues. The the crew finished today, uh, you know, getting all the cabinets and the multiple levels of subfloor out. All that, so, you know, uh, things. Easy gesture can get in and take care of stuff, so hopefully nothing goes too terribly sideways today. <clears throat> uh, you know, and actually, before we go outside, whoop, I'm drifting. You know what I really hope? The new engine for whatever game is involved, whether it's Space Engineers 2 or, you know, whatever, is when you cross floor types, it won't sometimes just yeet you up for no reason. So you just drift. That'd be nice. Uh, things. Things, things. So, we're almost out of ice. We're full on, on deuterium. Hey, hey, both of them. Uh, so we might need to go get some more ice at some point. Maybe not. I had to go get a full load of niter. Because we ran out of potassium nitrate, of all things. We're extremely low on gold. We pretty much run out of gold between every time the, the gold dab more returns. But that's fine. So I think the only thing we're waiting on now is just the remaining superconductors to come up to path. We're pretty much where we need to be for that. Uh, what... What changed? Oh, uh, Orthanc. Ran out of fuel. Ran out of nuclear fuel. Uh, I needed to go check some stuff with the remote cameras, and I'm like, why can't I dial? Wait a minute. When, when did that happen? Has that been like this this whole time? No. No, surely I've not been missing a piece this whole time. Uh, okay. No, no clue what happened there, so go ahead. No skin. Battered skin. Let's just fix that. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, anyway, Orthanc ran out of power. Ran out of nuclear fuel entirely, because apparently, with all the laser antennas running and all those deuterium refinery is going. It, uh... That doesn't look right. That can't possibly be the right color. Hang on a second. Zero, 95%, 70%, battered. Half slope, inverted heavy armor. Oh, because I'm looking at light armor, not heavy armor. I do. Let's see. We got him. Nope. Not that one. That one. That still doesn't look right. Now I need armor plate. Okay. Anyway, so. It was apparently burning at like full speed for all the steam. All the steam turbines. And, uh. So that burned down the little bit of nuclear fuel I had over there. So there's that. Uh, and on top of that, it wasn't enough. No, there's no way that's the right. Half slope inverted heavy armor. Yeah. Materials match. Maybe it'll look different when it's finally finished. Nope. Oh, because I wasn't to have a skin assigned for my placement because I was just on this, which didn't have one set. Unlike the paint tool, which had one set. That, okay, never mind. Ignore me. It's been a week. So, anyway, uh, ran out of steam. Ran out of nuclear fuel, so I had to take a load of, <laughs> of nuclear fuel over there uh, and parts to build another steam engine. So, actually, I made two trips. Uh, because one... I was like, oh, okay, now we got fuel again. We got plenty of power screaming along at max. Grid says there's a shortage of power? I'm like, that, that can't be right. But it was. So I'd make two trips. Anyway, uh, that was in addition to the trip back down to uh, Port Mordor to get a load full of niter from the niter mine. 
which I is still refining. Uh, other things that I did, because I don't recall what all was done. Uh, we have additional. Oh well, first I finished replacing all the bottom parts with composite armor where necessary, and uh, the aluminum armor for the interior still. And we have we have things. We have two new pods here on the back. Uh, we need to print two up front, but we need clearance, and we don't quite have that clearance we need, because, you know, the ring itself is there. But we do have... we have a thing. Gear. It's clangtastic. But we've got deployable landing gear, so it tucks away out of sight. Because there's one thing I hate, it's landing gear just sticking out on a large ship. But then it merge locks in and locks in place, so I don't have to worry about goofy clang stuff. Unless, you know, uh, we decide we're going to punch full throttle while the gear is still retracting. And I've got timers set up to multi-stage this whole thing so that the doors properly close and the merge blocks toggle and it retracts up and swings up into its, its deal. Uh, which I built this, but then realized I had to completely mirror it for the other side of the ship. Got annoyed about that. Cut this free <laughs> of the ship entirely. Blueprinted just the gear in the flat panel. Opened up uh, Engineer Toolbox, did a mirror of that, repasted it back in, it broke half of it because Engineer Toolbox doesn't include subgrids, so I had to go through and do all the subgrids manually again. And then I realized after I did that, it didn't actually need to be flipped after all. But anyway, so we've, we've, we've got stuff to, to print all this now. This one hasn't been toggled in yet because I haven't gone through and renamed it all yet. But this one works. Uh, that, was, that was that, and eventually things will be renamed to match the naming schemes just, you know, with rear ports instead of rear starboard, and then I'll just add them into the existing timers, because we use six timers? Yeah, six timers to do the full sequence to extend and retract, because only two of them can be reused, and there's a toggle to turn on the ones that aren't shared as necessary to trigger, and then one timer that's going to hit the whole thing. So eventually we can just set each gear, plug it in, go from there, take care of things. Uh, did some greebling. I don't remember how much this was shown on last stream or not. I, I honestly don't. It's, it's been one of those weeks. So we have some greebling done. Uh, I did more or less balance this out. Uh, we've got the frame shift drive uh, here in the center, which is the, the heavy piece, and we got two two jump drives using the the lit pass through version uh, from the the mod by the same thing because it gives this cool walk through lit thing. And when we turn these off, they go to red and they stop spinning. I've wanted to use these for a while, I just hadn't had a use for them. So we got those. Uh, I got walkways in. We've got some other walkway stuff. I don't really know how far I want to take all of this yet. And when we've got a gravity generator or a series of gravity generators on this, it'll it'll maneuver a little bit smoother. Oh, look! Hey, look! We're just floating free because we changed panel facing direction. Come on, space engineers! We've got magnetic boots. That shouldn't happen. And we've tied in the parts that have stuff where it's really, you know, where it would be reasonable to have them because I can't get rid of the walkway pieces because it's part of the actual manufacturing blocks. But there's this and the bottom part of some stuff. I don't remember what's even under here. I put something under here and I don't know what it was. I had to put heavy blocks in the bottom or uh, regular light armor because it wouldn't... Uh, Oh, right, the shield. <laughs> That's what it was. Fix that. And then inside... Oh, get stuck. All this is, is up and running and lit now. 
No, no, no. Yeah, we need we need gravity generators sooner rather than later. Uh, but anyway, we got the full full walkway path, full connector set up. This is actually sealed now. Uh, we can open it. Yeah, I I think it's cool. I put entirely too much effort for it only being this finished with this thing, but it happens. But uh, yeah. And then, of course, these tanks are the deuterium tanks. So once they're full, or they have some in them, they'll have this nice purple glow to it like everyone else does. And the whole thing's more or less functional. I've got one of the two touch panels set up now, uh, programmed so we can open and close and control depressurization and toggle the timers and the doors. Uh, right now we're empty because I don't have a safety check configured yet. And I, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that because it can be done with the VIC controllers but it's going to get really janky really quick. And I might just do a programmable block instead and either write a quick program for it or steal like one of the various airlock scripts and alter it for it. But it does work. You can click. It'll open doors. It'll close things. No, it's the force close. This is the toggle one. It helps if you hit the right button, Goose. But it opens it on. Just that one side. We'll have a second screen here for the other side because we should never need to open the hangar gates on both sides at once. There's not really a reason to need it at the end of the day. But the whole hangar open, all that swing stuff works. I'm pretty sure we showed that last time. I don't think that's changed. The only other thing of real consequence is after looking through the amount of materials we had, I realized I was running low on lasers, because all the fusion stuff ate up so much refined crystal. And uh, we were down to like 200 crystal prisms, I think, which is way too low. So I went and built what was absolutely ginormous, like, wide static grid array, so I could just throw down a projector, throw parts into the possum or onto the, the elephant, and just go print in series until we had, you know, like 50 drill heads spaced out far enough they're not penalizing each other. The whole bunch of exotic material refineries and a nuclear reactor feeding steam to keep everything running. Uh, and I dropped one on crate and uh, used the elephant to bring out a couple uh, killer tomatoes to space them around for defenses, just in case the GC shows back up. I hadn't seen them. I haven't seen them around Crate at all since we blew up their station. So there's that. And then I did the same thing on Lazuno for Spice, or uh, Aloris for Spice, because I wanted to make sure we had plenty of refined spice. We got 50,000 refined now. We just finished chewing through a big load I did bring back manually. Uh, but that's all automated. And theoretically, the killer tomatoes were needed there because the syndicate did have ships flying around still. Uh, and while building it, a couple syndicate convoys got in the way and got blown up by killer tomatoes. So clearly, that works. Uh, otherwise, I think everything else is about the same. Nothing's really changed other than like inventory stock where things ran out and had to be refilled. Oh, come on. Really? I need better batteries for my suit. The suit batteries don't last long enough. So I hope you all have had a good first two-thirds of your week. Hopefully mine will get better. Depends on how the insurance adjusters showing up to fix the water damage stuff goes. And I think I want to work on the back end a little bit more still. I don't want to close it and finalize it, but I do want to get some stuff. Oh, that was the other thing. Haha. My brain, my brain power's coming back to me now. Inside, there was a little bit of greebling done. Not just the rails and the stairs. We got cargo nets. I don't know why. I don't know what to use them for. But we got cargo nets. And I like that. I think it's cool. It's wholly pointless. We'll probably tie it into some of the greebles inside somewhere. But for right now, that'll be what we start with. And because of that, we do need to figure out how we're closing this in. Uh, we do know from testing that I've done 
that the damage cone for these fusion thrusters doesn't start until the actual cylinder starts. Uh, my best guess is that Space Engineers considers the back end of the cone, because it'll deal damage on the far end. Uh, but the, the start of the cone, it views it as normally inside the, the cone for the block itself, so it doesn't deal damage there. I'm, I'm not 100% positive, but that's my best guess. So we can enclose these out to about here-ish, which means putting blocks on this face shouldn't be a big deal. We're going to have to use half blocks, though, because if we use full blocks, then it's going to stick out past. But we could do half blocks and do that, or we could do something like... Uh, Yep. Something like that with the slopes and build it out and then put an exterior cone. Because this is on the exterior, uh, we do want to use the composite armor blocks just because we need the protection. And not really sure if we'll need it. For some reason, uh, with this connected, the ring is running off its shield block, not the ring shield block, and I couldn't get it to not. Uh, I tried, like, alphabetical stuff, breaking and, and regrinding. I'm not I'm not quite sure how the mod handles what's going to be the dominant shield block, but it is what it is. But all of our fusion tanks have been welded in. Our fusion reactors finally have all their parts in. That took forever in a day. And I kind of like the Griebling with these these rail blocks, and I, I want to figure out how to tie it into the rest of the interior spacing some. Uh, I'm just, I'm not quite sure how yet. And I need to figure out how far back we're going to take the rest of this. There's aluminum, an aluminum shell around the bottom half of this garbage uh, to try to clean it up some. We do need to set a way to vent this space internally so we can, we can seal it, which is why the, the gear the gear recesses have glass on the inside. So one, you can monitor them to see what's going on, uh, but two, so it's airtight when it's open. But of course, at the end of the day, it's still armor glass, right? Like it's, you can, you can break through it if you have to. But let's go back over here. Did I actually do these out of composite blocks, or are these just light armor for shaping? These are just light armor for shaping, okay. So, from up above, uh, I did want to do, like, inch and pod to the side, and I think I want to have them be... the pylons be a little bit thicker. A little bit meatier looking. And I think... Because this is about two-thirds of the ship. Uh, go out about this far on the neck and then start the hammerhead. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll go out further before we start it. I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's kind of a f by feel thing at this point. But that does mean I want the pylons to come out here-ish. So it's going to go into the ignore color. That's not what I wanted. Uh, anyway, using the ignore color. Oh god. I can't I can't mouse it's mouse today, chat. It's it's bad. It's real bad. You keep coming out. It's fine, that one's broken free, so the building repairs will clean it up for us here. So that's that's about the same point. I kind of like that. I think that's a good depth. Maybe. Maybe. Because we could string up tanks outside of that. And if we need to, we could always pull it farther forwards. I just don't want to pull it to the very, very back, so that rather than pylons and nasals, it's just a back end of the ship. So I think that's probably good. Why are you doing Okay, fine, I'll do it then. These are building repairs. <coughs> I'm stuck. So if we do this... It's 
we need to keep in mind as well, we need a place to put engine or weapons. Because we need weapons. So I think that'll probably be good. I think I want to drop this whole shape down a block, though. So when I was originally planning this out, I wasn't really thinking about how I was going to shape the underside. And since I've shaped the underside, I think I want to change this. Oh, actually, if we kept it here and didn't move it forwards, it would kind of move in with this existing corner, and that'd be kind of cool. Or, I could shift it back an extra step. I kind of like that. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and place these four realsies this time. And that way we kind of have to live with it. There we go. I remember how this works. We'll do a composite armor block there just in case we need it for completion of the... Like, we don't really need it for the the actual armor itself, but just in case we need it for, like, texture joining. Uh, that is one thing with these, because these... The composite armor doesn't use the cube block shape that normal armor does. It actually has a hitbox that extends slightly beyond the actual block itself. You can see it here with the selection box, which is used for physics counts, is slightly larger than the actual block itself is, which is why the interior of this tray is heavy armor. Because if I didn't use heavy armor, when this folded out, it would bind up and clang. And that was mildly annoying. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. They're using a uh, topographical block, I believe. So we do that, and we just mirror this going out the rest of the way. Uh, blop. Nope, that's wrong. Blop. Okay. So this gives us the bottom now. And we're going to mimic this shape. Moving forwards, all the way up the rest of this body section. Um, at least to here, right to the vertical stands. And that's going to run down the full side of the ship. And then we'll start tucking it in tighter going that way, and I'm not quite sure how that's going to look yet, if I'm going to do, like, bands wrapped around it. Actually, hang on, we could do that. That wouldn't be bad. That could be kind of cool looking, actually. Okay, so, uh, if, instead of carrying this out all the way, Alright, we just built this. That's not right. Get this block back. The quantum quantum uh, stock device, by the way, is what's putting parts back in my inventory. Uh, this is not creative mode free placement. It's got to come from the inventory. It's just I don't have to keep running back and forth to do so. Which is the fun part. Right? If we did something like that, it's play strong. Something like this, or even extra space in between, we could get kind of a banding look going on. And actually, I kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Energy low, I get it. Sit on the couch in a moment. I'm doing things. This would be the other way, and we just like every 
sixth block, we have it stick out again. All right, so we'll be looking at, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this one sticks out. Two, three, four, five, six. Keep missing my block placements. I'm just, I'm just slightly off the placement side when I hit the button. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Because it doesn't have to be consistent either. We could break it up and do like a bunch of these that only go to here, and then one that goes all the way out, or even do this. And then, like, cuts the middle one. So then that gives us, you know, four ribs and then nothing until we get to the front edge. And then we start figuring out how to taper that in. So we're still a pseudo pattern, but not really a full pattern. That could be neat. I think ribs are the way to go for sure. Because that breaks things up a little bit. and doesn't require as much intentional greebling otherwise. Then we just won't run any ribs where this wing's gonna be for the pylon. And if we kept the top of the pylon here, or, well no, because we can't, um, yeah, if we went up one. Got about twenty-seven thousand dorium right now. Uh, when I did the ran out of money, pretty heavy. Uh, that's why we're actually low on gold. Is I was a little bit too aggressive on selling gold to make credits in order to easily buy replacements bits. Uh, that's the light armor block, which is not what I need because we need. We need a thing. Anyway, uh, it I got tired of it, and so I just went and used some of the drills that were taking forever to refine, and just used them to make those static drills, which is why they're using Tier 2 drills on the array, not the Tier 3 super fancy faster ones, because honestly, I don't think the speed's going to matter that much, as long as they're not basics, and the third ones require quantum computers and laser... Uh, assemblies which require crystals. So it felt kind of self-defeating to like deploy a thousand of those out for the next year drill up, but it's not going to matter. So anyway, we got that. If that's the top and this is the bottom, that's one, two, three, four. Four empty blocks in between. And so I'm counting from that vertical to there, which goes up one, two, three, four blocks, because the top of that is the same height as one above these greebles, which is here. So we got four blocks of vertical space, six blocks total. That might be a bit much, but it does give us space to do maintenance pathways out to the nacelles conveyors. Potentially more gyro space if necessary. Uh, and if there's any weird stuff that needs to be done for like weird conveyor junction off points for weapons, we have that. So that wouldn't be too bad. 
clean up my stuff from what I was doing before. But I want to say, like, yeah, six is too thick, but that's five, seven and a half meters. So we're looking at 24 feet. That's not that bad. It's basically the height of a house, of a single story house. Which for an engine nacelles, a uh, support pylon for one isn't all that bad. And if we wanted to, we could also stick some of the impulse engines into that too and hide them. Because the nice thing about these impulse engines, whoops, impulse, is they don't have a damage cone. Uh, let's see where. Thank you. Uh, damage to ships, uh, right about that. Flames longest zero meters. Right. So technically, that means that these don't have. damage kind of, as long as they're not sticking something inside the block size. So, that gives us some options for hiding them, because they are just, they're small, right? They're, they're one by twos. So that could give us something like sticking them vertically off the, the conveyors, or flipping the conveyors, and doing the same thing. And that gives us, gives us some options to play with inside the pylons, which would be neat. I do like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then the question becomes, do I want to continue this shape all the way back? I feel like taking it at least as back as the pylon trailing edge is important. But then we can do something like... Uh, so if we go here to these... This is testing. We're going to turn it into a ignore color. We need to go with this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I didn't. I didn't refill everything all the way previously. I'm aware. Don't need to tell on me. It's okay. We'll go back to the med bay and get the fast recharge shortly. I considered adding one of the mods that adds like just a like a wall mounted or bed bay. This is a half block form factor. So that'd be kinda neat. I just haven't done it yet. Oops. Also some of this, uh, like out here where the fusion engines are, only one build and repair can reach it. Which makes things interesting. So that's uh that's height with the bottom there, so we don't take it lower. If we did that, we can take that straight forwards, and we can still do something like like an engineering bay out the back here with like some windows and stuff. That'd be kind of a neat greeble. So I don't want to put engineering down here, so we've already got like manufacturing and all that. But like maintenance itself in the back would be kind of cool. Especially if we stacked up like a whole bunch of visible gyros, that'd be kind of neat. I don't know. I'll play with that on some and see how I think about it. But from the side, that's not a bad angle. I mean, if we took it out to here, the outside of that that landing gear pod that'd be easier to blend in going forwards. Mm, yeah, because if we just took it straight out, we'd be here, right, right at that point. That's blendable. We can, we can blend that. Will it blend? Yes, yes it will. It will absolutely blend. So let's... You know, we're going to do it this way. Okay, yeah, that's that's the right level. I counted right. Uh, 
that. And then we just build on the bottom here. Do do do. Oh no, I messed that up already. Messed it up already. Alright, so... We did one, two. This should be a flat block. That's what I messed up. Okay. I'm going to place this here so I remember. And then we're going to go recharge our suit. And go from there. And I suppose we should probably have some sort of med bay in the back. Right? A secondary med bay. What if we could set them to not allow respawns? Maybe we can. Maybe we can't. We'll see. Alright. Good enough. To get the regular survival kit, the medical room, and the corner medical room, and the medical station. Medical station is just decorative. We can't use that to actually recover off of. The corner medical room may not be bad. But also the survival kit is smaller. And I kind of like that. Especially if we were to do something like building an engineering bay off of that. Because we could always just close it in, right? It's armored. We could always just close it in and then fill the interior space gaps with gyros because we're going to need so many gyros. So many gyros. Then the back, the back end of the chip is just mass. Ooh, what if? Mm, still need an armory, a secondary armory back here. What if? What if that was the river hanger? Right, because we're not deploying rovers out of here. Or... Or... An AI-controlled missile... Like a, a rear-facing torpedo section. That'd be kind of cool. I like that. Okay. We're not going to fill the space in yet. But we'll use it for something. Not sure yet what. But something. I kind of like the torpedo idea. That's where one, two, three, four. Did I mess this up over here? I absolutely messed this up over here. I know I didn't. That's the next, next aisle over. Next line over. Anyway, so from here we go back to sloping in, right? Yeah, that's what it looks like. A doot. A doot. A doot. A doot. And that brings us back into the main body. Or right above the main body. So when you get to here, we're going to fold this in as part of that. We know what that blocks, but none of the rest of it matters. And that gives us the ability to then 
take that back further. And this gets us more shaping. And then we just go back to... Do we just do a hard cut? I feel like we just do a hard cut. Yeah, okay. And that gets us a shape back to there. And we can always build the protective cone recess back into this. Again, out to about here-ish. We'll be safe from block damage. But this gives us a baseline, because we can always come back and cut these pieces out. And go from there. Which then means this... We just carry this across this way. This gets us the hard, the hard back end for. Whoop, almost took my head off for that shape. We just need to figure out how to feather the shape back up in it, or now we need to feather it. Which, of course, immediately flies in the face of everything I just said about taking this out to here. But we still could. Like, it wouldn't be a bad thing, I guess. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Which means this is going to be a different block entirely there. That means that this is going to be more like this. It's going to extend down the rest of the way like that. The problem is it's going to be very difficult to go from these half pieces up in and have it look nice. This is going to limit the angles we can use for transition reasons. Or we just leave this off. We do a hard cut here. Which does work better. Uh, where was the... There we go. Maybe. No, because that doesn't work. See, here's, here's going to be the problem this right here. Because I don't think there's a piece that does that shape except the one transition block. So then we're looking at cutting this out. Uh, and then cut this out. Maybe we just take it out to the end and just make a chonk. Alright, just, just a big, a big thickness. I'm down with that. Ooh, wah, ah, ah, ah. I'm not gonna lie, Chad. If I suddenly disappear, it means that I blew a breaker. We've got a lot of stuff going on in this house right now, electric-wise, <laughs> with dehumidifiers and everything else. So, no, no promises. Okay, so thinking about the concept of running ribs that stick out. If there's no ribs that stick out for the entirety of this spar, and then this is the last, you know, exterior rib. We could feather this back one step.
then we just get to here, we go back to chonk mode, which is actually this. That's the wrong angles entirely. Hang on, let me fix that. Screwed that up. That's the wrong block. Nope. That's also the wrong block, because the angle's gonna be wrong. The angle! It's gonna be wrong. Uh, let's see, you go. This is the next one in the, that line? Yeah. Because that ties in at the bottom. Now we've got a proper slope. And then we should have this. No. This. There we go. I remember my vanilla space engineer shapes now. Maybe. Alright, anyway, that's that's fully handled that way. So we can always come back into here. And then we'll just do a whole bunch of these. Yeah, okay. That's how we fade that side. We have to take a hard cut here because there's no way to bring that in, and we don't want to, anyway. These may come off. We'll see how they go. I'm already not liking them. If you got some thoughts on it, leave it as a comment. That's wrong. Wrong shape. There we go. This also gives us the opportunity with this flat plane here, we can put guns on that. Which wouldn't be terrible. You know, just one one big artillery turret. On each side. Somewhat centered as a block of block of cheek. It's not going to be able to shoot straight out, but it'll catch all this stuff, which is the important part. I like that. That's a good thought. Alright, we're going to put in temporary garbage here. We'll put in our gun. Gun. Yeah, I like that. That's centered in the panel, outside of the slope. We can take the slope straight up and back. It lines up with the outer edge of that thruster. We can still build a box around if we decide to. But we don't have to. And then everything here is just going to be excess armor. Around the sides, straight back. For coverage. Because we could do something like... That would take us sideways. I don't know if that's really what's wanted, but it would it would be doable. So we need to go to here. So we wouldn't need this. So we'd still have room for decorative greebling to tie that stuff in. We have room in here to pull out conveyors. Yeah, okay, I like that. So at the end of the day, uh, we're here, because these are just going to get built out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need more. That's right. Seven. Yeah. So this now sticks out the same distance that way. It would start. This would be the bottom of our our nacelle ring. Um.
it almost fits these perfectly too. It's an even it's an even count height, but an odd count for blocks. So maybe we take it up one extra level, or we pull it. We go back to pulling it back down again. So if I had if I had left it at the original height, that would have worked better actually. You know what? That's oh God. I hate this, but we're gonna do it anyway. Do not hold down shift, especially not control shift. That's that's a bad way to paint way too many blocks. Don't do that. Energy low. What do you mean my suit energy is low? I just filled up. I think the pump is cheating me. Now let's turn off extra things uh, burning burning resources for electricity for no reason, like the antenna that we're not using. Uh, and the lights that we don't need. Okay, so we do that. That's three. Three vertically in tight in height. Uh, so we could do things like thrusters still for the impulse thrusters. We could do a, a bank of conveyors with a gap, an air gap, so explosive rounds aren't going to penetrate through. Do something like this. That gives us that, which means we need to be able to run. Up and around that for the shell at minimum. But it gives us the option to do shaping. So we could do something like start off at a 45. Let's do the simple thing that way. That wouldn't be terrible, actually. Rather than doing a more rounded nacelle. Because so I could even tack on an extra angled greebly bit that way. Oh, wait, no, that needs to be five. Oh, no, 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 that does work. That does work. Because if it's offset. That means we've got this middle one here. We could do goofy decorative channel stuff that way. Still come in here at the bottom. Do our tie-ins. That's not right. I messed that up. What did I do wrong? I didn't go up an extra block. Okay, so that last block was right. Right, because for the outside, this isn't going to be seen. Although, if we wanted to, we could do that on the interior edge. And then while we're walking around, it is intact. And that would also, if we made these conveyor pieces... Oh, wait, we don't need this anymore because it is connected already. Yeah, it's connected all the way around. This is the one that's not connected all the way around because I didn't draw the piece in. Because I'm bad. Yeah, so if these were conveyor pieces, we could even do like Energy. the fancy pipes. Alright, it's ran a conveyor pipe. Because these deuterium tanks have ports on all four sides, the port would be tied in, and then we could use that. And then here is our conveyor junction, followed by gun. And if we repeated the rough pattern inside of the fusion reactors here instead, so ran like 
that, followed by another tank, um, followed by another pipe, followed by another tank, followed by another pipe. Not a ladder, a pipe. And another tank! And a pipe. And the tank. That takes us one in one in some tanks forwards. We can repeat this process here in the back. This gives us the actual nacelles are longer than the actual pylon wing is. We do. We go refill our suit power. That's what we do. Before we run out of power and then suffocate because our life support system shut off. And even though we have oxygen, the suit won't provide it to us. Hey, look. Those of you on live space? Okay. Yeah, no. YouTube did something goofy there. Said it wasn't getting data, then it got it. Okay. We're back now, that's the important part. Right? Yeah, we're back. That's the important part. Okay. If live space was fine, it means it wasn't me. It was something between me and YouTube servers, though. Because it... YouTube itself... If YouTube had an issue, YouTube would have gone down. So, it was something in the routing between... I'm gonna blame... I don't know. Let's, let's blame Meta. We're gonna blame Facebook for it, because that's convenient, and I like that. Uh, but anyway, so back to this. So, we're here. If I continue this shape out, right, because we're not gonna see where this shape would have gone with the pylon over here, because the pylon wing is there. But if we do that on both sides, yep. but then we chop out this middle set of blocks, we got that. And then that could be extended down. We've got this nice little, like, channel cut out the side. We could put guns here. We could put decorative lights. We could make it look fancy, like it's, you know, designed to make it go faster. It gives us options. Or we could just leave it the way it is, and I can just put, like, a racing stripe down the side. And that makes us cool. So everybody knows racing stripes are cools. Cools. Or cools. Oh, God. Guess how are we supposed to know you're tired? I say things like, are cools. Like a... Dingus. Alright, we go back here to the fusion thruster. We're gonna place this in fake purple right now because these things take so many components. And we just recovered from the last two I built. We're not ready to build more yet. <laughs> and that puts them in line. Uh, they're a block down. So we got from the back, we'll have a nice little offset. Okay, that's gonna give us four forwards. That's. 200 mega newtons of thruster power in one direction. That's actively upsetting. In the front, we could do the same thing. Oh, hang on. That sticks out super far. Do not get accidentally brain damage crushed. Alright, so that's how far this goes. If we put a thruster in the front, it means that the hammerhead cannot, with its hangers, cannot go out further than here. Because, actually, here-ish. Because what how about, does that damage cone? Hang on. Damage cone time! And then we put an engine in. Flip it back around again. Uh, we do this, we do this, we do that. How big is this damage cone? Oh, 
God, that's wide. Turned off too far. Cheater. Okay, so we'll, we'll look from the back. Oh, that's so wide. <laughs> Our cools is acceptable. Yeah, it's been a week. Alright, so... How many blocks out could we go with this? more than four, four, it's, it's, it's effectively five blocks for, for safety factor. It's not quite five full blocks, but like that, damn. Okay. But at least now we know where that damage cone is, so when you get too far away it won't matter. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't give a whole lot of distance for a hangar bay. I mean, if we did hangar gates, we're four blocks wide with the actual opening. In which case, that's plenty. Right, even with the, the stylistic ribs, because that's... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six blocks with the ribs. So really, even including the, the hangar gate blocks themselves, that's still in that distance. And if we did gates instead, you know, these are these are five by two. So we get three blocks wide. I don't really five across. Do two of those that way. Maybe looking at a three by four. Three by four either way. Which does mean, since this back here is five blocks tall, if we did it sideways, we could be the same width as the actual pylon. And that has a nice a nice fake symmetry to it, I think. I think I like that. Alternatively, we go back to the airtight hangar gates, right? And we just place them as necessary. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we do that. And then from above... It's not super far out on the pylon distance, we could stretch that more. I mean, we're, we're still a pretty narrow ship at that point. What if we doubled the length of the pylon and just shuffled this out another, what, eight blocks? Like the actual pylon itself, not the, the support piece. Although we could also do if we did 10 blocks, that takes us all the way to the ribs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? 10? 6, 9, 10. Yeah, 10. I can count. I don't hate that idea. That wouldn't be bad. Then we wouldn't need to put guns at all on the pylons. Or on the than A-cells, they could be purely in the pylons, because we could do several sets side by side. Like, not actual side by side, but like one there, stagger forwards, stagger back. It gives us options then. Kind of like that. Okay, so make everything bigger. Bigger, bigger, bigger. bigger. Alright, that's broken free. Yes. Okay. And we go into delete color. Painted obnoxious Lisa Frank purple pink. The builder repairs will take care of that. They wouldn't normally because it's got computers set to it, so it has ownership even as just an unbuilt grid block. So.
I have moved the entire downstairs multiple times this week. No, I am. I am beat, Chad. And that's with a bad back. Alright, so if we carry this out the rest of the way back to here, we do have a little bit of a, a thing that way. I feel like it needs to be mimicked back on this end. Not to try and keep things perfectly symmetrical, but just from, like, if there was structure, right, that, that might care, it would be good to have. And also, we do need to go two blocks further up, at least, because the concept is we'll have that and then the outer skin at a minimum. Right, that's that's the the lowest we can get because we need to have room to run conveyor. No, I'm, I'm bouncing. We need to have room to run conveyors, have an air gap between the outer skin and the inner skin again because of potential explosive round impact, uh, or you know, like the GC starts fitting their their robot piloted craft with warheads and you know kamikaze running into us. I want to have a little bit of protection for some explosions. So we're looking at this at a minimum. This is the absolute lowest the outer skin armor shell could be on the top. And then we'll do a stylistic hump build up over those as well. So we need to kind of stretch up into that some. That's not right. That ain't right. There we go. There we go. Alright, so... Keep stretching. Keep building. So I, I do want to kind of ease this in. We could go straight. Let's go one, two... We could go up to two more blocks of vertical height gain if we needed to. That's, that's an option available to us. that is an option available. And we only have symmetry on the outermost edge. Right, because this slopes and then has a hard drop to the side and then goes down to the bottom of the ship. Whereas this has a convenient up and across. And from the front to the back viewing it, that, I mean, that does look... What did I do? Let's see that. That does look starkly different. It's got a bit of a callback on the outer edge. Here and here to the other side's mirroring. And then it breaks completely, so it's not just a mirror over the top. I like that. We're going to stick with that. Which means back here we're going to go ahead and mimic that too. And then... And I wonder how many composite blocks were short, <laughs> or what we're down to. I think we had about 2,000 composite plates built at start of stream, and a whole bunch more deuterium that can be turned into plates. It's just, it takes forever to make, and that's even with having, I think, four plate presses running. It, just, it takes forever. And actually, we don't need this. So we're tied in. We're not tied into the bottom bottom, though. But we are tied in... Almost the top. <sighs> Alright. Uh, we're gonna go... That way, and that ties that in. Now we can paint... that's all inside that line, so actually we can even do... Mm. It's depending on how we tie this in in the back. How we blend this backwards. Maybe we'll just go with a straight wall, and then I'll do like... 
an inner chamfer here. Alright, because we've got some options if we do that, because I could do like that. Let me just carry that up. It doesn't get in the way of the gun. I don't think. No, it doesn't get in the way of the gun. It gives us a bit of a transition rather than a hard corner. But it's not a complete, you know, a complete thing. And then we can do this to blend that back into the main body. So we have a little bit of a, a smoothness, we have a little bit of a hardness. We don't do this because this is unnecessary now. Oh no, we, we, we still do that. Never mind. Ignore me. And we have room to do... Whatever goof-assery we want, we can do. Right? Yeah. Because what if we just took this up all the way? Ah, oh, crap, I just want to blend that because we don't have access to... <sighs> Hang on. We intentionally break... The, uh, what? No. We intentionally break the symmetry pattern. That's not right. I'll go back and fix that in a minute. With a stripe, a horizontal stripe. There's there's our horizontal rib there. It looks a little bit structural. It won't be, but we don't need to worry about building the rest of that back in here. We just break this line hard because this line exists for the lower deck. Here's our rib. Let me just take this out. And there we go. We can even give that an accent color for all that matters. Is there a way with one of these goofy shapes to give a call back? I guess we could do that. It's not quite the same thing, but we could also just say, screw that. Leave these out. Is there a way to mimic that on the bottom? Not really. I mean, there is, but it's going to be ugly. Energy low. That's when we'll be doing this. We gotta bring it up into that then, and I don't wanna do that. No, we'll just we'll do it on We'll do it on the top only. This'll just sit here like this. Do I want to? 
So we're doing a hard break there. Maybe we don't. Right, like this? Because those aren't... Oh, God. Aren't, those aren't going to combine. So let's take this up the rest of the way and see how that folds in, if it even needs to. I don't like this now. I do not like this. So we're going to cut this entirely. We either go hard edge... Or I fully incorporate. Those are the only two options. This just becomes single blocks. We're still hard edged. We have the rear rib. It's a reinforced rear rib because the projection's too wide instead of one now. We don't have to feather it in. Like here's the thing. People always feel like they can't have hard hard lines or hard edges. And I think part of that is the fact that. Space Engineers restricts you to only a couple angles, but in real life, there's so many things that have hard edges. Even on even on the shuttle, the orbiter, right? The the old space shuttle, there were still points of hard lines on that thing, even though it tried to be fairly aerodynamic for stability reasons. It had some hard lines. You just didn't tend to notice when looking at it, because you had no concept of the sense of scale of that thing. That thing was huge! Somebody who's walked through one, it's huge! <laughs> like, it could fit a school bus in its cargo bay. With room left over. Right? So... Don't be afraid to give hard edges. I feel like people go, I want, to, I want it to look smooth and organic and not like a brick. There's a huge difference between, you know, a 3x3x5 three by three by block chunk with hard edges and anything with an angle. It automatically debrickifies it. And also, edges aren't bad. This is people get stuck going, I, I've only got so many angles, so many pieces to work with. Think of it like Lego, right? Like there's some absolutely insane things people have done with Lego when you scale it up big enough. When you get close up enough, yeah, you're gonna be like, oh, there's a hard edge. Look around your house. Look around, look around any public building. There's gonna be hard edges, there's gonna be angles. But when you look at the building from far enough back, right? Even some of the stuff in, like, um... The UAE. Uh... All the fancy buildings. Dubai! Even in Dubai, with some of those, like, uh, round buildings and stuff like that, you get up close to them, they're not as smooth as they seem from a distance. You know, there's hard angles in there from windows and things like that, from the plate glass. And you only notice those when you're up close. From far back, you don't. There's nothing wrong with it. I kind of want to stick something in here. But it may just end up being rebuilt fake windows. I don't know. We'll see.
I need to do something here though. This this needs a transition. So what if uh, we go back up here? We need to do this block, not that one. Uh, that one. Not that one. I guess that is the right one. This is not the direction I want it to go in. So maybe we don't do that angle, or we do and find another supplementary piece. Because now we're losing that rib, that that support piece that stuck out, that was stylistic I wanted. So I think we just cut all of this. I think we just cut all of this and we bring it back flush again. Because then we could do this and just carry this straight up. And when it meets the top, we're still going to see that stick out further, but it's going to be emphasized slightly. And I think from a distance it's going to look better. Now I might be wrong entirely, and all of this stuff should shift back a block. And I'm going to hate it when I finally see it. And I'm going to tear it all apart and do that. But it's a pretty minor thing at that point to do. We're going to help the building repairs. This is taking a bit. This is with an elite grinder. Alright, we'll leave that to build and repair. We go back down here, we build build our shapes up. And we see how that ties in. That's always the problem, the, the hardest part about making a larger ship is stuff like this, finding ways to bring everything back in. Okay, so here's okay. Here's where we get our callback. So up here, we have this. This is the wrong block, isn't it? No, that's right. What is that? That build stage is wrong. There's a box there, and there should be. This would be a triangle. Anyway, so we get the small the small piece, which is recessed back one block, but then we got this here, so we, we're continuing now the because it's not a straight mirror, but it's a callback to it in the design, and I like that. But the question is, do we take that with half block straight back? Or do we follow this? And we kind of followed up above, so we can do, again, a callback. It's not a complete mirror, but it is... It has the same geometric hints. And the brain wants to think there's a pattern in there, so it likes it better, even though there's not actually a pattern. Let me just take this straight back then. So now we've got the bubble that started up here. And it flows out and then just goes straight down and then evolves into the back. So we have a little bit of a feeling, again, this, this is going to be a big flat space. But that's not a bad thing, and we can add rebels to this. We can we can add some extra accent pieces that stick out. We could come up in here and we could cut this and do something like this instead and build off of that.
And again, now we've got a reflection of up here, but further back. Now the question is, do I want to do another one further down, or is that going to ruin the illusion? No, I think we are. Here's, here's how we get back that little bit sticking out that we originally had at the very bottom. Now we don't need this. We only want to go to, to that. Uh, maybe we don't do that then. <laughs> Still could. go up one higher for that. I was thinking you could do like a double. Kind of like do one do one here and then one there. And take it back as a two white piece as a hard angle. But we don't have a 90 on a 45 anywhere else on this ship. And that's gonna look out of place if we don't have anywhere else on the ship with that. So we're not. I said we're going to go back to this. And we'll take this block across. And we're basically a mimic of that higher one further up. We're just doing it here instead. Actually, we could even hang on. We could we could make that part of a band. So kind of like the the pseudo fake rib earlier. Make it look intentional there. If we put the gun there, it does get being in the middle. But if we move the gun up one, because again we're still centered in this goofy face. That's centered on that panel. The brain tricks itself into thinking that's a pattern. And it's more accepting of it, and it's going to ignore the fact there's going to be a big flat space back here as a result. Also, if I make this too complex, it's going to be a gigantic pain in the ass to replicate, and I'm not going to. So, like, we want to add some accent lines, but we don't want to take everything into wild, crazy, hard-to-replicate curves and everything else. And this is still pretty simple so far. I feel like we're going to cut these out. And we're going to go back to this block... We'll pick up that angle line there. And we end it. Energy low. And that's how we bring that back. And then this is just going to be... Straight out pieces. Again, it's kind of hard to see with the wireframe, but it'll make sense. Because at the end, we're still doing... ...big, chunky panels, but they don't look like big, chunky panels as much. Now, we've got accents attached to that, so let's... Uh, let's just blop see where we get here with some of this stuff. And we'll build it as we go. So, 
There's that. Uh, we would need to take this further out, so we're looking at ten blocks, another ten blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I'm going to say we're probably still in the realm of the quantum tether because I still have blocks. Maybe not as many as I want, but we are still there, so we must still be in range of the quantum tether reach. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Now we have the building repairs tucked up in tight over here, inside the frame. I wonder if this last build repair is going to be able to hit there or if we need, we may need to stick, we may need to stick one of the pylons just to be able to get this back in because this sticks out considerably further than it used to and I have concerns now. We put a build repair back here, it's tied into the system and it can cover the nacelle. We could potentially do two, one at the front leading edge, one on the trailing edge of the pylon. And that wouldn't be bad. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And repeat over here. There's going to come a point in time where we're going to have to cable, you know, connect this thing up enough. We can stick it on the end of one of these docking arms and move pieces into it so its own build and repairs can assemble itself. All right, that that looks better. Again, if the sh the front of the ship ended there, this would look too wide. I feel, but we're going forwards. just about the full length of the hangar bay again. This is going to have a shape on the front. And now that we've moved another 10 blocks further out, we have more options available to us for how wide the front hammerhead shape goes. And I like that. Uh, let's eat a soup. Because our hunger and thirst are going up there. Slowly recharging the suit. Recharging the suit. Alright, close the helmet. Don't forget that. I'm getting better at remembering it. Maybe in another year I'll stop forgetting entirely. That'd be kind of neat. And then from here, we build out our stuff. So... Where are existing connector hooked up, hook, hooked ups? If we ran a double line from here out and here, there's one there behind that block you can't see, here out. That gives us a little bit of redundancy for distance, or could do trailing edge there, which gets us one block gap distance problem is we don't have one here, but I could change that. So if we come back into this, doot, uh, blah, blah. Uh, we go with the pipe junction. Oh, that's the wrong color. Ain't nothing gonna get built. There we go. And then we repeat the process back here. tied in multiple ways now, so I'm not worried about actually breaking the entire assembly free. I did that twice! This is actually like the third or fourth time I've rebuilt the fusion reactor array because of that. 
Ugh. Okay, so if I build a row of connectors off there, we will need to do a plunge turn at some point. But for now, not necessarily. One, two, three, four, five. That's to the wall, so we're actually not going to do that. So we'll do this. And then we'll put in a, a conveyor junction box. That's that point there. Which means we come back up this way. We do a curved pipe and then a curved pipe. We're not doing any goofy fancy pipes this way. We just take this back all the way. In fact, actually, let's let's break this around the midpoint. We go back here, we'll just do a pipe junction there. That way if I need to mount something to this, I have the option to. And then we'll do the same thing here. Oops. Kind of the end the end point for the road. So this gets us there. So if I build... That's not centered, though. Mm. Alright, so I did that wrong. Did it all wrong. I was thinking just take it down one, not we need to actually change how this works so it's not stupid. Which is my fault. So we need to go to here, which is right there. Look at that. Uh, we do conveyor junction. Come back out. Well, those are being chopped down. Uh, we do curved pipe. You know what, I kind of want to do an end, and yet I don't. Maybe we'll do a, an end pipe at the, the junction points. Yeah, that works. I like that thought. I like that thought. I need to come to here-ish. Right, and then, yeah, and then we do the pipe end. Because does this mean a whole lot to us for utility? No, it's, just, it's a difference in appearance. But it does mean if we need to come in here, it gives a little bit of a a change in uh, in, in physical physical variant, vis visual variance, a little bit of visual interest. We just mirror this going back the other way. So we're gonna have this here with the, the rails and all that stuff. We we'll just go back to regular pipe ends. Do -do. And this way, if we need to do something like, uh, you know, split a build and repair off or something, we've got the option to. Or if we need to attach it to the ceiling or the wall, there's some options for building because nothing attaches to the side of these these round shits here. All right. Anyway, with that, we can take this and then go another pipe end. Oh, we don't want to do a pipe end. Uh, maybe we want to do a pipe end here. Yeah, let's do a pipe end. We do a pipe end on the other side. We do a pipe end here, going into this kind of feel like it's a bit of a tradition for this portion here. We come in, we do our gigantic deuterium tank, which we're doing in purple, because these, again, eat up a lot of components. Mostly the cryogenic coolers. Uh, 
uh, if we do the same thing out this way, how many blocks we have in between, I don't know yet. I feel like the deuterium tank pattern is going to be based on how this rolls out. So let's let's do the things. Uh, we're doing a regular regular conveyor pipe, and then a curved pipe, and then we just take regular pipes out to the midpoint. Conveyor. Nope, too far. No wait, no, not far enough. That's the first support support spar, not the actual midpoint of the pylon. So we do this, we do uh, in pipe. We do the pipe junction, another in pipe, again keeping it consistent. And keeping the, the gravity rails on the side. And we take this all the way out. Could I count the block space in between? Yes. That sounds like work, effort, and thinking, and I am anti all of those things tonight. Nope. There's that. There's that. Let me go back to pipe end. There. And we do uh, deuterium tank and don't build me up purple. Parts for these diamond doesn't cheap. The motors require copper wire, which is the only thing that might be, you know, potentially an issue. But I think we're in a good spot for that right now. Alright, so we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Oh, this perfectly meets our spacing designs. Oh, I love it. That worked out so nicely. That was that was cool. I wish there was a double-ended pipe, like a conveyor pipe end on both sides. That'd be neat for like those one-block spaces where you want something on both ends, but you're not running two two pipes. Oh, that works so well. Wait, no. It's not quite perfect. It's fine, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because this part's not going to be seen. It's going to bother me enough to make me move this back one? No. God, that's so much effort. Even at this point, there's so much effort, I'm not doing it. Not doing it. Uh, that's the wrong block. There we go. We'll do this. And then I think rather than a conveyor pipe, we're going to go with a junction before the engine this time when I place it. Because that seems like it's a better idea. Here we go. We need to go, what, five blocks out for safety? We got 15 back to the main body. Well, yeah, 15 back to the main body now. Not including the ribs. 16 if you don't include the ribs. 15 if you include them. So I feel... I feel like that's good. So you're not pulling the hammerhead portion out that far. In fact, I kind of want to take things in from this front edge here. Maybe bring them in a block or two. Down to, like, this width. I feel like that would work well. Then we can expand back out further up. If we do one, two, three tanks out there, how many tanks can we go back? I think we've messed up our spacing in the back now, though. Which, yes... Could be fixed invisibly. But I think I want to keep the pattern going, even though it's going to be an invisible pattern. Yeah, we are. Because that's going to provide a little bit of symmetry break on its own. And that'll be good. Let's 
I think I placed that upside down. There's a couple decorative pieces on these these fusion reactors. Uh, they're not symmetrical. There's, you know, whatever these things are. And they've got kind of a, a direction to them. I think this has got a different 90 degree orientation. I am sorry for that. Okay, so... Let me build up our big thing around that. With a little chain on the outside. That actually works. We're off by a block. Oh, we're just, just barely ahead on those pylons. I like that. I do actually like that. It wasn't intentional, but it works. And I think that means that ultimately we're going to pull a tank off the front of that. Or maybe we won't. No, I think we're not going to. I think we're going to leave it with the pylons recess slightly rear of center. Or the, yeah, the pylons slightly rear of center of the nacelles. Hi. Do you want treats? Do you want up on the desk? Or no? No? Okay. Everybody's been stressed from all the noises of the, the vent fans and the dehumidifiers and the construction noises inside the house and the circular saws and pry bars and splintering wood and everything else. And uh, his hip is just acting up a little bit more. So, no cat on camera tonight. Because he's... He's got a, a, a happy face on, but he's he's got a bit of a lip. So yeah, it's all it's so much noise. We turned we turned them all off last night for a couple hours. Like we turned them all off because just there was it was so much. We had to. One of the fans had a slight bearing squeak to it, so even with all the doors upstairs closed and noise canceling headphones on, it was just the right frequency. That all you could hear is, wee, 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 wee. It was, it was the worst. It was the worst. It was the only thing you could hear coming through. You didn't hear like the the low bassy rumble of the fan drive. You just heard that little squeak cut through everything else. Because <laughs> it was a frequency that, that meant the noise canceling headphones didn't cut it. Because it was a frequency that the human voice normally reaches. It was, it was the worst thing ever. It was like. There's a shitty pig somewhere, a little piglet, just making noise. Actually, you know, it sounds like it sounds like an upset rabbit. Actually, like if you never heard a rabbit screech, it sounds like a rabbit screech, like every three seconds. All right, did I set this far enough out? If I didn't, we'll just cut the pylon back an extra step. All right, we'll start. We'll start this a block early. That's what we'll do. If it's necessary. And I don't know that it is. But it could be actually... Oh, hang on. No, this works too. Yeah, this works too. Yeah, that's wrong. I messed it up. Already messed it up. Yeah, that's wrong. And then we do this. That's, that's God. I hate how sometimes you can get through the wireframes and sometimes you can't. It's really annoying. It's really annoying. At that point, though, do we want to do one, two, three, one, two, three? Take it in. Okay, that was my fault. I can't blame that on anything else. Yeah. And then this... This gives us the channel still. 
It also gives it a slightly oblong stretch. And it works. I go one, two, three, because it's supposed to look like there's supposed to be a three wide wrapper for the tanks. But it's actually a five, but you can't tell. That's that's the goal. Yeah, I like that. Let me just cut this out. Actually, we cut this too, because this is wrong. Wrong. Not a sweet earth. Alright, so, how's this look? I feel like I want to take those side bits and drag them out. Yeah, I think I'm gone. Gonna do it. Like, I don't want it to look symmetrical, but I want to give the illusion of roundness. And doing that in an octagon shape does have its limits. Placed with a different orientation. I don't think it matters for the pattern, but just in case it does, there we go, we're gonna match it. Uh, we come down here, we do the same thing. Do, 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 do. Uh, we go, blop. So from further back, that looks better now, and we just need to pull this whole thing back out. I could, through combination of the 45s and the 30s, give this a pretty considerable curve, so to speak, but it's not worth it. Because the scale you're going to see this at doesn't matter, and it doesn't have to actually look round. Like, again, we've got hints of curves, but no actual curves anywhere else in this build. We've got gentle angles, we've got sweeps, but nothing that really needs a match to angles. And Doing stylistic one-offs, pattern breaks, things like that, that's all good for breaking up the appearance and outline of things. But if you actually do like a hard stylistic shift like that, without having it anywhere else, it's going to call attention to it in a huge way that you may not want. Uh, I'm not saying it, it doesn't ever work stylistically, but it does have an impact. Like the geometry does matter. Okay, I like that. That's bigger. It doesn't quite go to the top of the ship. Like, it doesn't meet the, the ship hull uh, outer skin. But it does go past, or it goes to the midpoint, I guess. No, it goes past the midpoint. Because the midpoint's actually there-ish. Uh, between top and bottom of the blocks. So that works. We've got all the space in the middle we can do for things! Or just leave it empty. Or fill it with, like, 300 gyros per pylon. You know, there's an option. I like it. And this is, then has to be extended back. So, now that i got that shape the way I like it. Now we go in here and actually fix the color. Oh my god, yes, I'm aware. You already told me. We'll just we'll mark this one ring out and have it built. 
and that way I remember, yes, this is absolutely the shape that was gone with. I don't have to worry about forgetting it or be like, oh, is that the way I want to get it? It's like, no. It makes it easier to see, too, which, when it's filled in, it's going to make it easier to, to piece that together. The question is, do I want to come back here and build, like, a, a cone shroud around this, this rear engine and put one in front? Because these are only there to help slow it down, right? 200 mega newtons rearward facing, 100 mega newtons forward facing. It's not going to stop as fast, but it's still better than relying on impulse thrusters only. Put impulse thrusters inside the nacelles. Instead of using two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Really, YouTube? Okay. Don't know what YouTube's having issues with tonight, but something goofy's happening. It says eight sideways, it's 56 mega newtons, so it's one large fusion reactor to a side that way. It's not terrible. 5.6 kilotons. No, double that. 5.6 kilotons per nacelle. So we're looking at what 11.2 kilotons vertical lift just off impulse without having to engage the fusion thrusters. It's enough to get off a lot of mass off ground and rocked back so that the oh shit. <laughs> See, I got plenty of gas still. It's not even an issue. It's just purely the power issue. I said to get up to rock back and then engage the big fuck you thrusters in the back. I still want to keep this thing fast. Right? Like, it's being called a frigate, which requires guns and speed and maneuverability to a, to a degree. But, like,. Well, well, if we have speed, we have enough gyros, we'll have the maneuverability. Which means I need to try and keep it that way. Um, let's turn on... Uh, center mass. Uh, let's see if I can get the... God, we got so many subgrids in here. So many subgrids... Where's the one for the center of this thing now? Uh, that's not it. Maybe it is that. No, it's gotta be... Ah, uh, here we go. Three point... almost four kilotons. So we're still at less than half what just that could lift up in a 1G planet atmosphere. Yeah. YouTube doing goofy things tonight. Which is, is it actually the first time we've had issues with YouTube? In what, nearly a year? No. Nine months. Nine months of the series, right? We started this back in July, I wanna say it was last year. Something like that. Accidentally open my helmet. Oh, okay. Alright, I like that thought. I'm gonna run with it. But that means I gotta link all these tanks together. So I can chop out. So I can chop out those connectors. Or those, uh, those conveyor tubes and replace them with tube junctions. Because right now the only thing holding those together is those junctions. Oh, hang on, we're gonna, we're gonna turn this back off. I forgot it was on already. So 
so we'll put these in temporarily. I just had a completely asinine thought of what if I used a merge block to hold these these day cells onto the pylons so they can split away and fly off on their own. I'm like, no, that's dumb. Don't do that, Goose. That's dumb. It's hilarious as a mental image, but don't actually do it. There's that. Let's just cut the rest of these out. We'll put in actual tube junctions. And again, the impulse thrusters run off activated spice, right? So they're not being fed off these deuterium tanks at all. These tanks are purely so I can go, I drained an ocean in order to, to pseudoscience together a rare hydrogen isotope and fill them once. But that's going to hide things so beautifully. We're not going to have to have exterior facing turrets or uh, thrusters outside of the big fusions. Actually, that's the thing we could do back here in the back. We could put impulse thrusters in geometrically pleasing cluster designs back here for forwards. Because we're not using the fusion thrust all the time. Especially for, like, maneuvering. Crash into the fake back end of the fusion thruster. Because it's Sticks out a bit. I just walked face first into it. It's going to take so many components to actually build. That's fine. Alright, these are all in place, so let's go in here and chop these back out. And again, if need be, could put artillery turrets on the outside of these nacelles. I don't plan on it. I don't plan on putting any weapons on the nacelles themselves directly. But on the pylons, that seems fair game. Yes, I can't shoot directly out to the side of my ship at that point. However, if somebody gets in right here and hugs in close, I kind of feel like that's a, that's a fair thing, right? Like they should get a little bit of a win, which will last just until I just do that and just whip the gigantic, gigantic badonkadonk of this ship into the airs and crush it. So, you know. It's not like I won't have shields to protect me. I have to replicate this on the other side now! Yeah, we're, we're, we're at a composite place. <laughs> we're printing off composite plates one at a time here. Uh, I like this. This works. We need to cut some of the... Okay, so we're connected this way. We can come in here and grind out this. Because we don't need these. We don't need... We don't need this. This is an extra block placement. That's the rounded edge. So we do need this one here, but we don't need this one. Now we can just go ahead and grind out the rest of these, and that gets a whole bunch of composite plates back that we didn't need to use. So they can be used to put together other blocks. I like that. Also, uh, enough songs have been added to this playlist. We have not looped it once yet. I like that. Eventually enough songs will be looped that it'll be like half the playlist gets played for any given stream. Which would be nice. I'd like that a lot. 
I think that'd be damn cool. That's our deck and bridge, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay. Uh, we are, however, gonna put this back in and finish out this big blank wall of blankness. So I can see how this looks. I like the bottom half of it so far. I need to see how the rest is gonna look, though. Before I really, like, sign off, yes, go through the, the process to replicate on the other end. We run this on the inside to shore things up. And I'm probably going to put a full block between these halves. We don't really need to, and it might be kind of fun to not. Maybe I'll put a half block. That way it's a, it's a full block total depth, but it doesn't eat up the full path on the inside. That's a good compromise. It's the same same part count that way. Uh, at that point, we don't need this, right? Yeah, because that's still a half. So ultimately, yeah, see, we're, we have so few composite armor plates that the quantum tether cannot restock the quantum or the, the composite plate I, I just placed down. We are one short. That's going to show up on my screen until that's fixed. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to go. Blop. And that should fix that issue. Now I got 10. Cool, the nag message is gone. <laughs> Let's go take a look at how much uh, Dorian we got left. This seems like a good thing to do right now. I'm going to crash into that unbuilt fusion thruster and die so many times that my body's going to go spiraling off into space. I see it happening. It's a matter of time. Alright, uh, composite armor. One. Dorium. 26,000. Okay, so it's just a matter of waiting. I guess they're like 30 seconds apiece or some, some ridiculous manufacturing time. Oh, five seconds apiece. My bad. Five seconds. Feels like 30. But now we have the design for that. And even on the front edge... Let's go uh, over the funnel. <laughs> over the cone. So there's this channel on the side. Could do the channel on the front as well. Could do windows on the front. For the mechanical access pathways inside. Because there's, there's windowed passages. Uh, let's take a look at... If we do a windowed passage... We're looking at 4,000 integrity. That's not good. That's not good at all. I don't like that. It's, it's not the 20,000 of a heavy plate. But it would look so cool. And then when we're running down the passage, we'd see them. I really wish there was a full block of glass. Right? Like, a window, but instead of it just being a single pane, it was just a cube of glass. Like, uh, Johnson, Johnson Space Center out in Texas, when they were doing the, the launch stuff there. Uh, during the, the, the Apollo program. Um, both that and the, the the Canaveral Op Center had the same build-out. And the glass was two and a quarter feet thick. 
It was just tempered glass. But it was two and a quarter feet thick. So it would have blocked debris. And I feel like... Space Engineers needs a full, a full cube block of glass. Because that'd be neat. So what are the windows at that point we're looking at? Uh, could hide it behind vertical windows. That'd be kind of neat. And it gives a little bit of greebliness. Could do a combination diagonal into the verticals. That'd be, that'd be neat. I like that thought. So we're looking at 1250, 900 into the passages insufficient. Or this passage blocks. passage is 4,000, so I mean, we're still looking at uh, more than aluminum, more than light armor. We're only half of what heavy armor would be, though, and a quarter of a composite armor block would be. So that becomes theoretically a large weak point. But maybe that doesn't matter. And then again, like on that, um, on that we could do the channel. The next message is gonna get annoying. Do do do. At that point, do I do diagonal window? Into the vertical out front? No, because that can't mount that way. Can I do Energy low. the uh, again the vertical windows? That'd be done like that to mount, which means it'd only be mounted at the sides. Then, so like we had, you know, block. do that into this into this that's somewhat doable I don't know how I feel about that but that's doable and then Is there a passage that's got two open sides? Kind of. That would be unsealed. I can stack the passages up. And then from that, go into the windowed one. Alright, so you're inside, you're looking out. You're looking through a window, through a passage, through a grate. That's not terrible. I 
I don't know that I like it. it was an option. 4K, another 2.5, so 6.5K, plus another 1,000. Well, 7,500, that's not bad. It's most of a heavy armor block. And it's three blocks thick. So even if we use something that's got like some penetration to it, it's not the worst. Alright, to get rid of the nag message, we're gonna go to the quantum tether. And we're just gonna break it. So now it'll stop trying to stick it in our our uh, I was wrong. Played myself. Composite armor. Just delete it entirely. There we go. Now it doesn't do it. There we go. Alright. Let's give this a shot. Let's see how it starts to look. Because I, I don't know if I like it like it. But I don't know if I don't like it enough to matter. You know? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's... that's potentially doable. And then, of course, we would have heavy armor blocks here, or composite armor blocks here on the floor. So I could just pretend there is one down there. But that's kind of neat. I like... This would be sealed. And then on the other side, you can see the conveyor frames. And... Where's the T? T junction. Take that into a vent. We put a full size, a full block size vent. Now we've got this tube pressurized with oxygen. We could even do a couple of these, right? At each each of these junction blocks. Because then, if it's full size, we still have these here. So we could put hatches on these for decorative rebelies. We could do actual things attached to them. The floor would be whatever. And then you look out and you got that. Okay, this, this could be really neat. I like this. And we just mirror this on the other side. It doesn't impact the entire middle. We could do whatever we want inside the pylon there. Actually, we could mirror it on the middle, on the other side, because we've got two extra blocks of space. Well, we could. We could, but we wouldn't have this. We wouldn't have the, the, the cross passage. It would just be the window, the windowed passage straight to the vertical window, and it would still work otherwise. Which I'm not against. It's not bad. You still have. No, what? Because. <sighs> 
we'd have to run direct here for that. So we'd be looking at like floor vents then? I kind of feel like chopping this off and moving it back one block is the way to go now. Or, uh, but if I did that, we'd bleed all this out already. But this could also just be chopped off and slid back one block. Right? Like, it, it doesn't meaningfully impact anything to leave it that way. I don't know. I'll think on it some. I kind of want to mirror that just for the maintenance passages. And you take them on through and... Bam, you're in, you're in, yeah, in here. Put a door up. You're done. It was just a big, you know, just a big ring. Actually, this is wrong, then. Or is this right? And... No, this is right. This is wrong. This is the wrong part. Okay. Which means this needs to go back an extra block. Ugh. Arg. That's fine. It's not that big a deal. Uh, we go back down here. We go to end pipes, feeding in. This just gets chopped off. Uh, this gets chopped off. And actually, we could we could actually do the stupid double end thing now. Oh my god, I can't believe that. <sighs> so gross. So disgusting. Absolute worst. Can't take me anywhere. Think, yep, yeah, that whole thing's free floating now. Um, all right, mistakes were made. There, fixed. Uh, ish. I need to slide it one over, so I didn't actually fix it at all. Actually, I, I made it worse. I made it worse. That's fine. We can we can we can fix this still. Watch. We'll just we'll do this, and then that'll match, right? And then I'll turn off that one slide it over one block, and then turn it back on again. I'll be fine. They were, they were good. There we go. Now it's fixed. Now we just tell it to get rid of this. And, uh... Maybe put a fake block there to anchor that in place. And, uh... So, this is anchored to there. That is anchored to this. And that is anchored so we can get rid of these. Okay. I didn't mess it up this time. Yay! But that works. Okay. This is wrong. That's not. Okay. Now oh, wait, no, that was right, wasn't it? It was right. Oh man. Alright, so T-junction here. 
You go with a regular garbage block here. Actually, that works, because if we're doing this, right, because it's part of that inner edge, now we got three points of contact plus the backing wall. Okay, so that's that's not going to break off and snap away super easy now. So that's, that's good. Uh, we do need to put our vent back in, though. We're going to stick... Uh, but that's, yeah, I wish there was a way you could do the lights at the bottom without flipping the vent panes. That'd be nice. But this still works. And we could do, like, we could do... Hear me out, chat. What if... What if... Yeah, because it goes out the middle. Mm. But... Hang on, that means it could. There's our goofy tubes. We got our goofy tubes back. So you're staring out through glowy stuff. I don't know. Maybe that's too much. It's probably too much. I'll probably do something similar, though, at some point. I can always do catwalks. And you know, now we've added yet one more layer on the front. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think I kind of liked. Maybe what'll be done is I'll do something similar to what was done down here with the the Jeffrey's tubes, the Willis ducts. And, uh, and the duct braids, right, where there were, there were lights inside. The lights because of, was that something from the, the, the ducts themselves? I don't recall. Yeah, there's a, there's a light duct. Okay. Creaking out of our, our duct tubes. Maybe maybe something like that. Instead of this passageway three. Duct. Not dut. I never did put down a survival kit. Maybe those go there. Maybe. Rather than the passageway windows, no, because we still need we just need a way in and out. We just need a way to softly light the inside of this. Corners, T junction, X junctions, ramps. Ooh, wait a minute.
beneath the actual ducts, or the actual pathways, we run a duct. Which we know is there. But no one else would know is here. And also, it would provide light from below and it'd be creepy. And then I could pretend there was alien spiders in it. You can even mirror that up above and just give a very faint glow on the floor and ceiling. I'm not against that. That could work. And then of course you got, you know, the actual floor. So we could do a sideways tube, or sideways duct, but then we, we can't see out of it. Unless... T-junctions are not going to work. Because they're that way. X-junctions... Again, also aren't going to work because they're that way unless you're like, you, there's no, there needs to be, here's the problem with these ducks, there's not one with a hole in the top. There should be one with a hole in the top. There should be one with a T going up. This is, the problem with the ducts is that there's no way in vanilla to change the level of verticality. You can shift top half, bottom half of the same block, but you can't physically go up or down Energy with them. Critical. And that's annoying. And maybe this is going to be the thing that makes me go find a mod to do exactly that finally. I don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. What I do know... Because I like what was done. Like, that was all framed out. We've got a solid plan for how that's going to go. Actually, hang on. We could, we, could put, we, could put, we could put a Willis duct running along the outside here. <laughs> Just for dumb goofiness. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. Um, hey, look, this is mostly built now. No, I really like that. I do like that. I might take this one step further. Because we've got this piece here that, that sticks out. I might continue it. Right, it pushes forward more. And then maybe that's replicated here. Yeah, no, that's... I like that. Let's, let's do that. Now we do actually have a mirror, except it's not actually a mirror. Well, it is, but it's, it's also not. Yeah, I like that. So now, again, we have not quite symmetry, but we do have patterning. If it was symmetrical, this would be right in line with this, and it's not. But it's intentionally not symmetrical. 
but it does still have a pattern to the layout. And it follows the flow. As we get more narrow, it pulls back in and tighter. So it gives the illusion of an organic curve from a distance, even though it doesn't actually have one, right? Because these are all hard angles and stiff plates and, and sharp, sharp, you know, jags. But it still works. I do wish the composite plating would take a texture, though. That would be nice. And unfortunately, it does not. Energy low. Yes, yes, yes. Alright. I like this. The back end of the ship has been designed. The pylons and nacelles have been designed. The layout's been designed. Uh, I need to let this thing run and build composite plates. Like, whoa. Uh, that way we can finish skinning this out, get the skin done, get the exterior done. Uh, probably before next stream, I'm going to finish building out that maintenance walkway and then replicate it over here. I, th I think I'm going to cut this back end free and use the squirrel to shift it one block over. I do think I'm going to. Which wouldn't be hard. There's what? One. There's two blocks anchoring this in place. Uh, there. And then. I would just cut free that placeholder block. And. That's it. That's the only thing holding this on. It's just three blocks. So that'll be an easy move. Uh, I'll use the, the rocket squirrel. I'll shift this one block back. I'll replicate that maintenance walkway over here, finish out that detailed greebling, and I might try to replicate this. I might just... If I get enough of plate stockpile, I'm going to use a projector just to make this ring shape and just shift it ahead one every time. Uh, to make things easier for me. We'll, we'll see. I don't want to place that the full length manually. So, let it run for a bit, get that done, and then start working on replicating it to this side. Once those bits are done, because I had to pull the, the whole thing forward to begin with so that the builder repairs can get the stuff at the back. But once that's done, we could drag this back more. I can turn on the projectors for the front landing gear, get those built in, wire all that, and then can start considering where to do permanent cargo hookups. Because right now, there aren't any. There's a couple of places here in the bottom where there are some exposed conveyor ports, because I wanted to have that as an option. But when those doors open, those move into each other. So, not a great idea. And maybe it is. I don't know. Need to figure out where the permanent cargo hookup's gonna be. Just because if, if, if that exists, we can slide that back and then let the onboard build-in repairs through the, con the cargo conveyor system build the rest of the ship out as well as sound. Oh, right. Build and repair. Uh, where do you want to stick that back here? I'm thinking... I'm thinking... One on each side. Energy critical. Like that. And then we'll just tune their zones so they don't overlap each other. Or overlap just enough to be able to repair each other, maybe. And that'll get coverage. Because I'm concerned that the ones here along the center line of the body aren't going to be able to get all of that. I don't know. I'll fiddle with the sun. I feel like this, the range is going to cut off like here. So, 
Anyway, that'll be where we leave things for tonight. Uh, actually, I'm going to go sit in a seat before I die. Haven't died on stream tonight. Came close a couple times. Oh, now you want to be now you want to be vocal. Now you want to be vocal. Okay. It's like you you've been going to sign off four times now, and you keep getting distracted by yourself. Yes, you're right. You're right. Cats are always right, chat. Anyway, hope you'll had uh, an enjoyable time. Those of you who are watching this vod after the fact, appreciate it whether it's on live space or YouTube. Uh, drop a comment. Give a thumbs up. Give me your thumbs. I collect thumbs. Just come right off, you know that. Just click the button. Gives me your thumb. Uh, back again next Thursday night for episode part 33. Maybe 32 and a half. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I might be so beat from, from water recovery stuff that I just I don't run. But we'll see how it goes. Hopefully next Thursday. Uh, outside of that, stay safe. Stay goose. Where's my butt? Wrong button.